This is Brent with Lycans Motorsports. This is a set of pistons that we just got back from Calico. Uh, had the skirts coated. Uh, the pistons were originally from Racetech. Racetech does not do any of their own coating. So as soon as they came here, I sent them back out. This is for Mr. Dennis's 496 FE build. So this video, we are going to take a look at these pistons. We're going to look at the uh, Molnar rods, which we've already uh, did the rod bearing clearance check on them. And uh, we're going to do some uh, weighing uh, to get the measurements down and um, measure the skirts diameter and get everything set up so that we can hang the pistons on the rods and get us a bob weight to balance the crank. All right, so we got everything unboxed and Mr. Dennis requested uh, the skirt coating, which is an anti-friction, anti-wear coating. <laughs> Easy for you to say, right? Anti-wear coating on the piston skirts. And um, like I said, Racetech does not do any uh, coating in-house, so we send them out when we want them done this way. Uh, it adds um, about a thou to the overall diameter of the piston, so about a half a thou per side. And Racetech adjusted the uh, piston diameter. With that in mind, when I ordered those, um, I put in the note that we were gonna have the skirts coated, so they made them a little bit smaller. All right, let's get some weights on these guys. And we got our pistons weighed and measured. There's the typical weight discrepancy between, it, it's just hard to get everything in a big chunk of aluminum like this down to the 10th of a gram. So there's a little bit of discrepancy which we'll make up with uh, the, the wrist pins and the rod little end. Um, I, I talked to Mr. Molnar uh, over Instagram Messenger the other day and uh, he saw one of my posts and just wanted to uh, thank me for my business, but he said, I noticed that you weighed all the rods. And he said, whatever you do, do not grind on the big end, uh, the the fins, I guess you would call them, on, on the rod cap. And uh, he said, doing that can weaken the rigidity of the rod. And I told him, I said, I... I very, very, very ever rarely grind on anything to weight match. Uh, instead, you can mix and match components and get the bob weights pretty close to each other. Uh, so let me show you something on the measurements. Um, <clears throat> typically, for a 4 310 bore, they would make these pistons um, 3,000 smaller. So should be a 4307. Uh, that gives us 3 thousandths piston to, to wall clearance, which is right in the spot we need to be in. They gave me an extra clear, uh, extra thousandth clearance here uh, because I told them that we were gonna get them coated. Apparently Calico did just a little bit extra on the coating. So we're measuring 3064 and 3065. So the block has not been honed yet, I uh, expect to have that done next week, um, but I've already messaged uh, my machinist and told him to bump up the finished bore size by a little bit, so we'll keep that uh, three to three and a half thousandths clearance. So let's take a look at our rods. Yeah, we got everything <clears throat> weighed. Got our rods weighed. Um, forgot I had done this last time so we're in good shape or I was in good shape uh, got our wire locks counted out so right now we were just gonna mix and match um, pistons pins and rod little ends I'm a poet and I don't know it uh, until we get uh, even measurements across the crank throw so we're trying to uh, trying to keep from taking metal off uh, and it's and it's usually easy to do it to to just mix and match components because they have a little bit different weights on on the pistons and on the pins and on the rods. So that'll um, be extremely boring for you. It'll take me probably an hour. 
it may not take an hour. It'll take me a little bit. But um, once I get everything numbered, um, then we'll start assembly. Okay, and we've got everything numbered and matched out, and I was able to get everything within about, uh, I think, two-tenths of a gram balanced out that way. So, didn't have to grind on nothing. Um, now, I'm just going to go through <clears throat> and put um, put wire locks in. I uh, usually go through and just do one on each side, and and then stick the, uh, the rod in there, lube everything up, and assemble a piston and a rod. I have a dedicated screwdriver for this, but uh, the gist of it is you want to get your lock started. And they had that little um, little cutout there in the piston for leverage point. And you can hear them snap right in there. Just use some motor oil. Coat the pin really good. A little bit in the rod bushing. And a little bit in our piston. Um, this is the way the piston should be oriented. Big chamfer on the rod goes to our right since we're working on a Ford. Got it stuck on my finger. Grab a lock. Bingo. And that's number eight. So spared you guys from having to see all the monotony. Engine building building is just a lot of monotonous work taking stuff apart, putting it back together, doing things eight times. So I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad that I don't build any V10s or V12s. Um, very pleased with how this has went together. Now I have my bob weight information and I can take our scat crank and have it balanced in preparation for the engine build. Uh, we're using a custom, custom, custom camshaft for for mr dennis um he's going to be running a set of webers after he gets it home from the dyno and uh due to the hydraulic roller advertised durations and the rpms he's wanting to run and uh, us trying to cut down on reversion um we lengthened the lobe separation angle quite a bit which uh, uh the t your typical uh, hydraulic roller cam core for the FE, you generally are limited to about 114 or 115 lobe separation angle. So we went with a full, it's called a full round uh, billet, and uh, basically you can make whatever you want to out of it. So we're doing that. It took us, it's going to take us uh, uh, several weeks longer to get it, um, and it's a little bit more expensive, but um, I felt like it was the best for, for this build. <laughs> So we'll be waiting on the camshaft. Cylinder heads are here. Um, I'll tell you what, if Durabond doesn't get with the program on cam bearings, there's gonna be a lot of engine builders that are uh, gonna be stopped in their tracks. Um, these aftermarket blocks, Pond, BBM, um, Shelby, they take FP01 bearings. And right now, nobody has a set. Um, I have one set on the shelf that's earmarked for uh, a build, and uh, I'm struggling to find some others. So if you guys see any FP01 bearings, Frank Paul 01 from Durabond, please let me know because I need about four or five sets. Um, but that's where we are. So I um, was able to knock out something for this build, and I can check that off my list, something I won't have to do later on, and I can switch off to something else. Uh, that'll be video number two for you guys for this weekend. I hope, uh, hope you're picking some stuff up and learning some stuff. Um, that's the reason I'm doing this, just to help you guys out at home. And I will admit, I like showing off some of the, the cool stuff coming through here that uh, we don't get to see very often, but, uh, 
Appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Ring that bell, as they say. Hit that like button as well. It helps me out. Um, and, and I appreciate y'all watching. Me and our race tech piston and our Molnar rod say bye.